Hey everyone, it's Wednesday the 8th of March and it's 3.35 in the afternoon. Right, today's video. Um, I'm going to have an unboxing. I have got a Model Loco in here and we'll see if we can get that to run as well because I bought it as a non-runner. Um, so I'm going to do that first and after this I'm going to show you what I've been up to on the uh, Model Railway because I've been uh, working on that for the last couple of days. So. Here we go. Right, let's get this open, shall we? Shut up. One of these days I'll fix those loose connections, or even just replace that. Last week I bought this on eBay. Yeah, I'm pretty certain it was. So sort of last Thursday, I think. Well, I'll give him credit there, it is nicely wrapped. Right. Oh, I've actually got another locomotive to show you as well. well that is currently in the uh, in the bedroom on the layout, so there we go. right. Let's get rid of this rubbish. had the rest of the box with it, I'd have kept that, but and there it is. It's in very nice condition, as advertised. <coughs> there it is, a little um, 060 LMS in red. In very nice condition, actually. Put that blade away so I don't catch myself on it. Right, bring up the test track. I'm just going to give this just a very light wipe with the track rubber because it's been on the floor and whatnot. Let's uh, put the power cables up. One and two. And sit it on the track. And we'll see if it's going to do anything. Would you look at that? It's actually a perfect runner. And I was thinking I was going to have to uh, do some work on that. That is quiet as well. That's very quiet. Yeah, that's running perfectly. It's not the fastest thing on the planet, but it hasn't really got to be fast, has it? I've got a smudge sitting on the back of my chair watching this. <laughs> it's about the same speed in either direction. I'm guessing it doesn't need uh, the wheels or anything cleaning up. Well, that's a bit disappointing in a way, because I was hoping I'd have to fix it. What brand is this? Hornby, if I remember rightly. All complete, all the buffers are there. It's in very nice condition, actually. Uh, what do I pay for it again? Let me just to bring up the details. Easy if we just view the no, that's the wrong one. See original listing, that's what I want. 
Yeah, lot 763E, OO gauge Hornby LMS, loco for spares. Twenty quid is what I uh, want it for. OO gauge Hornby LMS 0607414 loco for spares. Loco looks in lovely condition when tested. Ran one way fine, and then the other way was a bit slow with some smoke from motor. So selling us for spares. Not box. All pictured up. See photos. I can buy and push it on multi buys. Blah blah blah. blah. Granted, it was a little slow in one, a little slower in one direction than the other, but I didn't get no smoke. So, anything, it's a bit, well, it's about the same speed in each direction. Uh, certainly not getting any smoke. I'm not getting any uh, any smell of burning or anything like that. It's a little faster going in that direction. Yeah, it's definitely slower going backwards than it is forwards. So. How does the body come off? Got one little tab in the back here. Right. In the centre there between the buffers is a little tab. So I'm presuming somewhere at the front there is a screw. Now is it the one that holds that front coupling on? It smells like it's been WD-40 or something. Oiled maybe. Maybe that was burning off. And that's what the smoke was. Let's just uh, we'll take this front screw out. I don't think I've got to take the other ones off. I've got a feeling. If we take that off. Nope, it wasn't that. Not like one down there. Nope. Not on the side there. Not on the side there. I'm just going to open it up and see if I can clean the uh, motor up, that's all. But, uh, I don't know how the body comes off. Another screw there. But I think, from the looks of it, those other three screws in the base are holding the um, plate on for the wheels. For now, I will leave as is. See if I can get these uh, coupling hooks back on. And what I will do in a moment is pause the camera and we'll take you through to the other room. You're going to be a pig, aren't you? You're always a pig. It's not hard, you've just got to sit there. One thing on, then the other thing bloody moves. Just hold it there. Get the screw dropped in at least. Like that. Right, 
Right, one more, one down, one more to go. Yeah, I'm just going to leave this one as a runner for now. I think if I get any problems with it, I'll um, look more into taking it apart and uh, cleaning the rotor up on the motor because that could be a bit on the mucky side. I turn the whole thing around. Should have uh, gone and found my little cradle up, my uh, maintenance cradle. Remember, I am watching another one of these on eBay, which ends, I can't remember if it's two or four days time. But I think it's actually from the same seller. Yeah, I'm actually pretty certain it's from the same seller now. Yep. You can see that, but photo wise, it looks identical to this one. I think he's just used the same photo. But he has changed the title and the description. And this one's advertised as running fine. Um, I'm just watching it. I mean, the current bid is 124, and there's still four days left, so I'll probably shoot up. Uh, so yeah, we'll keep an eye on that one. A few more bits there that I'm waiting for. All right. So, I need to pause the camera so I can move you into the other room. And I can show you the uh, other locomotive. And before anyone asks, because you may notice it, well, that is courtesy of Smudge. That's not self harming or anything like that. That's the joys of having an eight, nine month old kit and something like that. I can't remember exactly now without working it out. Um, who likes to get playful and likes to get rough sometimes? I mean, sometimes he can get quite spiteful and he has to get um, a telling off. Well, I say a telling off, he doesn't like it if I just point the finger at him and he usually stops. So, just like that, that's all I've got to do. Doesn't like that. For some reason. I think he's actually going to lay down because I can't see him. Right, so pause you and then we'll switch to the other room. Okie dokie, that took a little bit longer than expected because I got a phone call. <laughs> anyway, so I've put this on the track. I'm just going to move these wires out of the way. So we'll give it a test run on the layout as well. <clears throat> Before we do that, I've got another gorgeous little 060 here. Look at that one. It's very similar to this one. If you look at this one, this one's got the uh, enclosed cab. It's got the back wall on the cab there. What they call the enclosed cab. Whereas this one doesn't. It's got an open cab. Now I paid £11.54 for that and it runs beautifully. I 
was um, worth way more in my opinion than what I paid for. It's probably worth closer to what I paid for this one. Anyway, doing a bit of work on the layout, and I will show you properly. I think it's going to be easier if I take you off the tripod to uh, show you. But what I've actually been doing, I've started work on that far corner. I've got the fencing up, I've got a couple of telegraph poles in, I've put the grass down, I've done the track ballast. Not a very good job though, I actually hate it and I'm not sure if I can rip it all up and start again, but it's done and it works. Um, yeah, I've also done some lighting, and if you can see on the uh, station here, there's some platform lights, they ain't wired up yet. Um, but I have actually made three of these ready to go because I've got to have resistors in so it's just a case of uh, getting psyched up to get under here with the soldering iron and just solder these on I'm going to wire these to the cottage on the end there so they will come on when I turn the cottage on so they'd be on the uh, first switch here that nuts come loose I thought it had any problem with these nuts they work the way Lewis, I don't think I've got a wrench that's going to get on there. See, I've made three of these wires up ready to go because I've got three lights. So I've got one, two, three. Just making sure I'm still on camera. Because I know I do that and I'm off camera without realising. Um, I'm just going to have to swing around a bit. So over here, this isn't glued in yet. But I've done the track ballast on that siding. I want to get that glued in. I've installed lights in that building. And I've installed two of those uh, yard lights down here as well. And they do work. I can actually show you those working. That's one of the reasons I haven't got the big overhead fluorescent light, um, fluorescent light on. But if I just grab my wires that are down here, I don't actually have to do it this way. That's not the best way to do it either. Right, so I'm just going to hold that there, and we should. I don't know how well they're going to shine up. Let me just turn all the lights off in here. Yeah, there we go. I think you can just about see the uh, the shed there lit up as well. Let's just move that drill out of the way. Now, those aren't LEDs. Those are incandescent bulbs. Now, what I put inside that shed, let's turn my lights back on. I haven't wired these up to any switch yet, simply because I've got other lights to add on to that circuit. So, I didn't really see the point in wiring up to a switch yet. I mean, I've got the other shed lights to go on. I'll have a few more yard lights to wire on as well when I get them. Um, the lights I used, I don't know if you remember one of those big yard lights I had I showed you in the, one of the other railway videos recently. Well, I took them off of this one, the big spotlights, because I thought, if I take them off of this, because there's not enough wire on the bottom there to wire them in with anyway, and I couldn't really extend them because I wouldn't have had enough room in here to put the any insulation tape or anything around it. So I thought, if I just take them off and hang them upside down, they look like high bay lights. So that's what I've done in there. I've glued them in upside down from the roof and just tidied up the cabling as best I can in there. And uh, Bob is your uncle, as they say. Got a couple of high bay lights in there. Uh, I still haven't sorted this out yet. I may actually have to disconnect the wiring under there to get this back out because, as like I said, it's not glued in. Um, yeah, and then I'll uh, glue that skylight back in. Okay. Uh, I wonder if I can actually just grab the tripod and just give you a better look over at that end where my whoops I turned my screen around and hit the uh, record button and stopped recording anyway as I was saying I was going to move you over with the tripod 
So that's what's going to be my little field. I've still got a lot of work to do over there, but I've got the fencing in. Looks like part of it may have moved. Um, a few telegraph poles and some along this edge as well. So I was gonna I was thinking of actually dividing that field and putting some horses in one and carries in the other. Uh, I'm gonna put wanna put a bit of so I could make the grass look a bit longer. I need a different type of grass for that though, don't I? Which would have to be um, installed with that static thingy, which I don't have. Uh, hmm. I'll have to think about that one. Because I'm not sure, you know, how deep I want to go onto a little layer like this. It's getting there. It's nice to see some more uh, progress on it. Oh yeah, and progress on another loco. I found a chassis for the base. I can't remember where this chassis came from, but I was looking through one of my boxes and there it was. So I've stuck a motor in, so it all works, actually, while I'm here. So I have just noticed it. Right. On these particular motors, there is a little piece of uh, foam. And what you do, a little piece on the front here, right? Just get your oiler. And just dribble some oil on that and let it soak in. And just inside here, as well, on the back, is another piece of foam. So you're not going to want too much because you don't want it to splash over everything. I'll just dribble it on until that bit of foam looks uh, all good and wet with oil and then that is it. But the motor does work. It is one I've actually tested. I am missing, this is what I've got to find for it. The pickups. I thought I had some spare pickups somewhere but I haven't found them yet. Or at least not ones that will fit this. So I thought, you know, just uh, throw the other pannier tank body on it. I know it's got them two little bits, that damaged bit and that bit missing on top for the chimney, but still. So, let's see if this little uh, one here is going to go around the track. So I've got that on full power. Yeah, you see this. coming off there and I can't see why the tracks look perfectly clear. I cannot see anything interfering with the wheels. But we'll try again. I'm going to try one of my other ones and see what happens. I've noticed a lot of locos slow down on that back track. That one is actually slowing down now. Ah, that might be a problem. What if I need some new brushes? Let's try my uh, recently acquired pannier tank. Went through it perfectly. Made a bit of noise, but it went through it. fix that corner because I'm not happy with it. I've never been happy with that corner. <sighs> I seem to be shit at track blasting. Mind you, I've got to find through here, didn't I? And all around here, even if it does look a bit of a mess, but then again I suppose it wouldn't look perfect in real life, would it? 
but it's just this bit here for some reason. It's a bit high here, I don't know if that is causing it. I'm just going to have to sort of grind that down somehow. Chip it off. Oh, it looks high, but I can't see why that would cause interference with the wheels. I really can't see anything. Yes, I might be able to, action. Might be a couple of bits, I'll still have to just work on that bit of think and just fettle it till I get it right. <coughs> So that one is definitely going to need a little bit of a... Ah, it's got one of those motors in. Might need a new one. Might try and go for the other one that's on eBay. At least I could use that one as a spare, just for spare parts. I don't have any more lights at the moment to show you why, because I haven't got these ones wired up yet. Keep those wires separate. I think I've got to use that one as a better power supply at the minute. At least it's a proper power supply, not a one of those universal adapters which are more or less just for charging. I can find somewhere just to glue this up or something underneath. Actually this might get warm so I think if I use hot glue that might come unstuck. <laughs> well, I've tried to plug it does fit the socket on the back of this. Mind you, if I actually glue that down, that means I can't use it for anything else because I've got it labelled up for the, uh, the LED open sign that I've got. Right. I really need to try that track as well, come to think of it, before I uh, glue that um, good shed in place. And to do that, because I haven't got the sidings wired up yet, I'll have to uh, just use my temporary controller, I think, and just clip the wire, you know, alligator clips on just to try it, just to make sure it's going to run up and down. And I haven't done a similar thing there. It could just be the high spots that are catching the wheels. But this one went through fine. And a lot of the other ones I've already tried went through fine. Let's try my um, 4F Fowler. Almost had two more of these the other day as well in a job lot. A spares or repairs job lot on eBay, but. I think there was like seven or eight different models. None of them had motors. None of them had con rods on the wheels. But the bidding went to um, like 70 odd quid and I thought, that's, nah, that's just way too much for that sort of stuff. Too high for me. That one went through there perfectly fine. But then again, this little um, Airfix 4F Fowler is probably one of my best runners anyway, to be fair to it. It is a damn good locomotive. Yeah, I just wish I could have got that job lock because I could have got some spares from one of the chassis to go onto this. Like the end pickups.
I just weren't willing to go that high. You know, not for something that had no, well, none of them, like I said, had motors. I think some had the uh, pickups missing and there was only one that had comrades on. The other six or seven didn't. It just seemed like a lot of money for a lot of bits that were missing. So, uh, yeah, I just dropped out. I'm not saying it wasn't worth it, it just wasn't worth it to me. But there was two of these. They weren't Airfix models, I don't think. I think they were Hornby versions of the 4F Fowler. Um, but there was one in LMS Black like the one I've got here, one in LMS Red. It would have been nice to... Oops. Those box trucks. Move that out of the way. Yeah, it would have been nice to... Uh, gotten the red one up and running to go with my black one here. Never mind, I'm sure I'll find something else on eBay at some point. of the locomotives here and I know at the moment as far as I know I've only got that one non-runner which is that pannier um, apart from a couple which are just complete spares in fact I think I've got one that is complete spares and I've got another one but I can't remember what the problem was with it I can see the body from here I'll just misplace the chassis at the minute yeah, so I've got the body <laughs> Uh, but I can't, it's been a while, I can't remember what was wrong with the um, chassis now. Sorry, I was just miles away thinking for a second there. Um, right. I would like to start getting the streets in place next. I'm sort of, I seem to be going around the edge, don't I, and doing the railway yard more than anything else at the moment. So I've still got this big space in the middle. It's actually a lot bigger than I thought it was. Um, the problem I'm having is my brain, basically. <laughs> I can't picture what I want to do in the middle. Um, I'm, so, I'm struggling to think of street plans and where I want buildings and what I want where and what not. Um, you know, even though I've got the station here, which I only put there because it's on the straight track and I can't put it the other side because of uh, the train yard. You dipstick. Mm. Pardon me. I'm stood on one of my trucks. That's it. Go on the bed and lay down for a bit. Hmm. And no, it's not because it's full of locomotives at the minute, even when it's empty and I look at it, I still can't. I do want, like, a village green, as it were. Um, or something similar like that, so I can uh, put the classic cars on it and pretend to have, like, little classic car shows and things on it. And I was thinking of doing that... Possibly in that far corner. That would actually make sense. Because then you could pretend that uh, it's an event being held by the um, Heritage Railway to raise funds. 
So I think in that corner or somewhere over there would um, be quite ideal for that. Or up in this corner where the good shed is. One, yeah, one of those two corners. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. I don't know which one yet. I've actually, well, I was one of the reasons I was actually struggling with that track ballast is because I could only find, I've lost it now, but I could fi only find this pissy little syringe to put the glue on with. I could not find that one. So it took me absolutely forever to glue all of this down. It wouldn't have if I could have found that one, but I've done all that ballasting now. Uh, yeah, this one's got a better seal on it as well. I don't know where my pissy little one disappeared to now. It's on here somewhere. It could be laying up this end, actually. I've seen There must not be enough parking up the other end. I've noticed that with some residents and residents visitors, they're now pulling up the... here. <laughs> uh, not meant to, but... I don't see why not. I mean, it's on the paved area out right there, it's not on the grass, it's not in anyone's way. So yeah, I'm actually, I'm presuming then the, uh, like I said, the communal car park is chock full again. It wouldn't be. But, uh, the, um, elderly chap that's in a wheelchair down there, he's got a, a very rough looking Range Rover on there. Well, it didn't look that rough when it first arrived like three years ago. But it's been sitting and originally when he first got it here it sat on a bit of land just over there for a year just over a year actually before um the council wanted it moved and then he sat it on the uh, communal car park which is actually against the tenancy agreement because vehicles have to be taxed mot and tested <clears throat> Um, and insured, I believe, to be parked on um, housing association property like that. Uh, I mean, Victory Homes are aware of it, and they have asked it to be moved a few times, but it's been quiet for months now, so I don't know what they're doing with it. Um, I mean, you could argue he's entitled to park it there because he lives here, but at the end of the day, it's not in use. It's sitting like this because two tyres are completely flat on the driver's side. It's rusty, it's full of cobwebs, dirt, moss. It just looks like an eyesore. And that's what bothers me the most about it. It looks like an eyesore. If it sat there on four fully inflated tyres and it was kept you know, clean and reasonably tidy, it wouldn't bother me. <clears throat> um, I know he can't go out and clean it himself. Well, I'm sure if us neighbours clubbed together, we could have bloody gone out there and cleaned it. I know, I'm being nice to a man I actually consider to be a rather arrogant asshole. <laughs> you know, just because I might think things like that about people, it doesn't mean I don't actually like them. You know, or I'd want bad shit to happen to them, you know. Anyway, I digressed from the subject of the video there, didn't I? <laughs> I mean, he's got a motorbike sitting out the front here as well. Again, no tax, no MOT, no insurance, blah, blah, blah. Um, but to me, it's parked right up the corner out of the way. And it actually looks a lot, apart from that indicator that's hanging off, it looks a lot cleaner and tidier than that Range Rover.
Anywho, I do believe that is it for this video. Might have to, yeah, like I said, I've done enough. I'm going to get a new motor for this. I've got to get this thing open first. Um, very nicely detailed model. It's got a lot of uh, separately fitted handrails from the looks of it. I think this would have been nice if I had the uh, vacuum lines fitted as well. I do want to do that to a lot of mine that I haven't got them. My Airfix 4 a foul has got them in white. I'm not sure they would have been white on any real locomotive. Um, but they're white on this one anyway. And I can always touch them in black if I wanted to. It's even got lamps on them as well. Oh, and that rear lamp has got a little, um, what they call them, that look like a little diamond thing in there so it shines. Um, some corgi cars and dinky cars back in the day used to do that as well. I think it's got them on the front. Yeah, it's got them on the front too as well. Yeah, something like that attached. I mean, it's got... It hasn't got separately fitted lamp irons on the back. They're moulded on, but you could always glue one to the back. And just glue a couple on the front as well. One of the couplers aren't realistic, but yeah. I'm not fussed about that. Uh, right. I want to try and find some lighting kits for some of these other diesels and whatnot as well. I've only got one that actually lights up. Oh, I can't remember which one it is, but I know I've got one of the bigger diesels. I know it's not either of my 37s, it's one of, it's another one. That's um, got a light up running number on the front. I think both ends actually light up, but it depends which way it's travelling. Yeah, other than that, none of the others actually light up. Oh, I've got one light in one of my DMUs as well, which is crap, so I'll probably take that out at some point and... Uh, Upgrade it because it is just an old fashioned uh, light bulb in there, not an LED. If I'm going to light up the older running stock like that, I'm going to use warm white LEDs. So it would actually look a bit more period correct. Because you wouldn't have had cold white LEDs back when they were new. <laughs> um, I was going to say, that's why I don't like cold white LEDs, but I think it's just the use. I think people are just putting them in in places where they wouldn't have been, so to me it just doesn't look right. Um, especially if your layout is set like in the 60s or, or old-fashioned, like I've done, put in a couple of um, just ordinary filament bulbs. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. And I will try and remember to add this one to the Model Railway playlist. It's the only playlist I've got on the channel. Um, I don't know, I might try and uh, sort some more of my videos out at some point. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> It's quite time consuming when you've got as many videos as I've got on my channel. Anywho, thanks a lot for watching everyone. As always, thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't. And uh, check out the description for links to my other two channels. I've got a gaming channel and my Lego channel. Um, so it's English Gamer 38 for the gaming one and the BrickNut 30 for the Lego one. And of course, the Discord server, come and check that out as well. Come and chat to us all over there. I'm usually about... Not on mobile phone though, because I... Despite how long I've actually had that mobile phone now, I still haven't sorted that out. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye!